the home stretch. Welcome back, my dearest coneheads, to the SNL in review. It's me, your noble guide, the Count Gordeval of the Saturday Night Live recap scene, to usher you through the final three episodes of season 49. First up, Dua Lipa, who appeared as the show's musical guest in seasons 43 and 46. Now the Grammy winner is joining the ranks of musical artists, being given the illustrious shot of hosting. Will she be a Justin Timberlake or a Bad Bunny? Here's one thing in her favor. She got some acting credits under her belt recently with Argyle and Barbie. Speaking of a massive cultural phenomenon, I am joined by former cast member Jeff Richards. He wasn't in Barbie, but he was in the cast when another pop starlet pulled double duty, Britney Spears. He recalls, I remember Britney played Barbie with Amy Poehler. It was like I was watching real live Barbie dolls. Very cool. The show is riding high. The consensus was they knocked it out of the park a few weeks back when Ryan Gosling hosted and the live action Beavis and Butthead sketch killed. I was a little more measured than some of you. And that's fine. I'm enjoying most of these episodes for what they are. It feels like an end of an era. This season has been a well executed display of what the show can be given decades of scar tissue and muscle memory. But, is it sustainable like this? Cold open. We are watching Spectrum New York 1. It's the public affairs show Community Affairs with Ryan Abernathy. College students are protesting what is happening in Gaza across the country. Affluent white parents Mikey Day and Heidi Gardner are concerned, while sensible working-class Columbia dad Keenan Thompson is more supportive, but is certain his daughter Alexis Vanessa Roberts is not joining the protests. I'm not worried about 5 to 0, he says. His worry is only on paying his kids' tuition. He's doing Uber Eats, bounty hunting whatever it takes. Fun showcase for Thompson here, though some awkward moments, including his Live from New York. Not sure Michael Longfellow quite anchored the sketch the right way either. He is still young, monologue. Dua Lipa lets everyone know that yes, that is her real name, while also giving a nod to Wendy Williams calling her Dula Peep. She made her American TV debut at The Tonight Show eight years ago. Tonight, her parents are in the attendance and her third album, Radical Optimism, came out this week. Pretty short monologue, an easy lift for her. We do some audience work, tried and true. The audience members share their problems, and she spins it optimistically. Well, except Gardner's Christy Noam. Yikes. Young Spicy. Oh my God, Ronnie. It's this again. Get him spicy. Spicy on the track. Spicy in the closet, FO show. We saw this album recording session premise back when Ana de Armas hosted. Devin Walker is spicy, a hot record producer. He wants a tag for his tracks that's menacing and cool. However, the studio voiceover artists, Lipa, Ego Nudim, are silly and obsessed with his sexuality. The anomalous man, a theater fan, Lipa, wants to meet the show's playwright only known as the anomalous man meeting the elephant man inspired Peter, Sarah Sherman, she is very compassionate and kind. Even as things get stranger and more grotesque, Peter, a poetic soul, is so loyal and devoted. Well, not quite. He has a secret phone. I like this. Good morning, Greenville. Good morning, Greenville. Morning talk show host Mason Monroe, Day, is silly today. His co-host is a giggly gardener. The Sunny hosts want to talk about only the most important issue of the day, the rap beef of Drake versus Kendrick Lamar. They are goofy and mispronounce rappers' names. The station's culture critic Wanda, Lipa, has been listening non-stop, stitching all the clues together. Their weatherman, Walker, is embarrassed. Nah, he says, as the hosts pull out masks of the superstar artists and apologize to one another. This is pretty cringe. Even though it's about the cringy conversations being spurred by the beef. No thanks. Sunny Angel. Sunny Angel is a little angel boy who likes wearing all sorts of headgear. He is always by your side to make you smile. Marcelo Hernandez visits his girlfriend's house and realizes she's collecting all the naked cherub figurines. Bowen Young plays one. They banter a la the new movie Challengers, complete with a Chio scene, it's there for us. At different stages of life, births, death, marriage, it's there for us. Loved by none, but acceptable to all. Bland enough for children, it's that big fat tray of penne a la vodka. Dua Lipa, illusion. 
The host's close friend and collaborator Troy Savon introduces her first musical performance, in which she sings Illusion, the third single from her latest album. Weekend Update It's the first show of spring, Colin Jost notes. Jeff Richards reflects that NYC this time of year is nice. He remembers running in the park and having tapioca on the waterfront. Michael Che jokes Drake dropped another diss record after his joke bombs. Jost tells Che that time's up after Donald Trump announces he will go after anti-white racism. So the joke swap gimmick is really just their dynamic now, I guess. I like Che's Sylvester Stallone impression. Final thoughts. What did you think? Vote here or below. A bit muted? Seinfeld was a lone wolf on the good night stage. Thank you to Jeff Richards. Check out the latest episode of his podcast. The guest is former NFL kicker Martin Gramatica. Richards' favorite moment from the interview? When he talked about tearing his groan from kicking all those years, the price to pay for his greatness. The SNL 50 projects are revving up, aren't they folks? Jason Reitman has his movie about the first ever episode. And now Paul Walter Hauser will play Chris Farley in a biopic. Jeff Richards says, I think Paul will do amazing. He is the perfect choice. He's a great actor. Jeff has had Kevin Farley on his podcast for what it's worth. 